Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Brown of Men's Comics, and we got a great new video series launching for you this week, starting with this one right here, and it is the brand new Hot and Cold list. This is going to be a weekly video, and as always, I got my co-host, Jack DeMeo, aka Mr. Bolo, with me on this. Jack, go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you, Brian. As he said, I am Jack DeMeo, aka Mr. Bolo, and I am excited to be here again with a new piece of content called the Hot Cold List. Right, hot cold list. This is comic community in general. It's not comic issue specific. We already have the CBSI Hot 10 for that. This one we're painting with a broader stroke where we're going to cover whether it's hot writers, hot artists, hot books, anything that could be hot or cold in the comic community could make it on this list. Now the thing is, Jack and I aren't the people that make the list. In fact, we have reached out to authors from comicbookinvest.com authors of a bunch of different articles. They're going to give us their hot and cold picks each week, and we're going to compile those into one general list, and that's how the list will be created. Now, who exactly are these authors? Why don't you tell us, Jack? Right. Well, as Brian said, we are the guardians of the hot and cold list, just like we say on Thursday nights, we're the guardians of the Bolo list. And this list, instead of put together from people all over social media, is put together through important comic book influencers, writers, collectors, speculators, and investors that we've identified as having an eye on the market. We like to call this spec dream team our super team. So move over Golden State Warriors. This is the CBSI spec super team. Kicking off our team, our team captain, we have Ben Stein, the writer of the Hot 10 list. We will also bring Topher S., known for the controversial True First article. He will now be known as the masked speculator. Also, we have Andy Tomberlin from the Indie Spotlight series. Another great CSI writer that we have on our team who writes The Usual Suspects, as well as those dollar bin digging articles. We bring Peter Rain at the table. Quite the character for sure. And our reading review expert, Dan Piercy, joins the team to bring in his hot ankle entries. Also on the team, longtime CBSI member, Comics Heating Up writer, and YouTuber found at the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel, Mel V joins the team. Comicbookinvest.com, cover tunes writer, cover artist connoisseur, Mick Morello. And finally, running out the team, run the table writer, Joslin, makes our week one CBS spec super team. So there you have it, right from Jack's mouth. Those are the contributors that are making up this list each and every week. From time to time, we might have guest contributors that will provide hot and cold picks as well. And to kick us off with the first hot pick this week, we have Run the Table author Clint Jocelyn. What's up, CBSI Nation? Bringing you your hot book of the week. So hot you need an oven mitt to pick it up. It's still cover A of Naomi number one. This book continues to move regardless of what the haters say and or the people who throw up 10 copies and claim they're all theirs. The book still moves very well. There's still belief in the book, especially number one, cover A. Get it while you can. So there we have Clint Johnson's pick is going to be the DC comic series, Naomi. Now, unless you live under a rock, you're pretty much aware of the Naomi series right now, aren't you, Jack? Absolutely. And that's why it belongs right here on the hot list, because there is no other series, no other character more polarizing in the comics industry right now than Brian Michael Bendis's Naomi. Whether we're talking Naomi number one, the first appearance, whether we're talking the cover B variant, whether we're talking later printings or issues two through five, which just released today, Naomi is the most talked about property in comics. And while some naysayers may say, that the books have dropped a bit from the record highs of a couple weeks ago, it's important to note that just because a book isn't as hot as it, say, once was, doesn't mean it's red hot. And these books are red hot. Definitely. You know it's hot. Everyone's talking about it. You got the people that are for the book. You got people that are against the book. No matter what conversation you have right now in comic books, Naomi's name gets mentioned, and that's why it's on the hot list. Our next pick comes from... Mel V from the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel. Mel V here with the uh, first edition of Hot and Cold. What's hot right now? Diverse characters. You look at Alloy, you look at um, Upcoming Brother Voodoo, Brother Voodoo, all that spec is hot right now. I think diversity is here to stay. Everybody's looking for the next diverse thing. Look at um, New Agents of Alice. It's on fire right now. All that stuff is hot. Follow, get in while getting is good. Right. What do you think about his pick tonight? 
I really like Mel's pick. I think Mel's pick is an example of what we want from this show. Mel highlights a trend in the hobby, a trend in the industry, and that is diversity. Now, we've seen in the past a backlash to diversity, and that usually stemmed from previous instances of forced diversity, where we were seeing publishing companies change races of characters, change genders of characters, and force diversity down the throats of its readers. And what we have found is that the community is genuinely interested in diversity. They want diversity, and they want representation. And representation is almost more important. Representation is the ability for the reader to see themselves in the character. So to continue to have characters that represent different racial communities, different religious communities, different genders, and different people of different sexual orientations has been very key to where the hobby is today and where it's going. I think all you have to do is look at the Naomi series that we just spoke of or the new Agents of Atlas, which just debuted not a couple weeks ago, and the popularity that that uh, series has seen to see that diversity is important in the hobby today. It's here to stay, but it's all about how it's done. And publishers seem to have figured it out and buyers and speculators are buying it up. Diversity is hot in comics right now. I'll add to that where I think not only is diversity, but through that diverse characters, you also get to experience different cultures. And I think the storytelling that exposes people to different cultures and diverse characters is what's the trend right now and is what, as you said, is making that a hot item and definitely deserves a spot on this list. Our next pick comes from the ResidentComicBookInvest.com reading reviewer, and that's Dan Piercy from The Reading Pile. Dan Piercy here of DPiercy'sComics.com, which forwards to my article on CBSI, The Reading Pile. And my hot pick is Black Hammer, Age of Doom, number 10, this B cover. A lot of people, myself included, are saying that this book has some of their favorite moments of the series. And would you look at that shade of red? It's hot. <laughs> so Dan Piercy, always the character. He is the reading reviewer, and his hot pick from a reading perspective is Black Hammer, and Black Hammer is definitely a hot title. So what do you think about this pick, Jack? Right, as you said, Dan Piercy is the writer of the reading pile on comicbookinvest.com. He is CBS size resident reading reviewer, and he really hit the nail on the head on a book that has resonated with readers. Black Hammer from Jeff Lemire and Dark Horse Comics ever since issue number one has really had the antithesis of reader buzz. But with the recent option announcement from Legendary Pictures to option the Black Hammer universe for not just the small screen, but also for major motion picture release, Black Hammer has been hot in the secondary market with speculators as well. Dan in this video highlights cover 10B a more recent variant, which is, may currently be selling for undercover price. But as we noted, Dan has been all over this series from day one. So if he's telling you that issue 10 is interesting, it's one to be on the lookout for because Black Hammer as a series is hot. Also, isn't there a crossover event coming up for Black Hammer? There absolutely is, and it couldn't be bigger. Black Hammer versus the Justice League is coming in a major crossover with Dark Horse Comics and DC Comics, which should only continue to make the scope of Black Hammer even bigger. And with that being said, it definitely deserves a spot on the hot list as well. So big thank you to Dan Piercy for that pick. Moving on to our next pick comes from the CBSI Hot 10 writer himself, Ben Stein. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ben S. You know what's hot? Matt Baker cover art. Seven Seas, Phantom Lady, doesn't make any difference. It's all selling like hotcakes. You know what else is hot? Milk Coke. Mmm. Tastes good. So I purposely left it at the end of that video just for a second because, man... Coke milk looks pretty tasty, don't you think? I don't know, Brian. I'm lactose intolerant. I think I got to put that on my cold list, bud. <laughs> yeah, so I want to see that on uh, Stein's Hot 10 list. Coke milk number one. <laughs> um, with that being said, I love where Stein comes from with this because Matt Baker covers. It's, it deserves... It's, 
It definitely deserves to be on the hot list. And I also think it's a great pick because I don't think there's that many people that are aware of who Matt Baker is and how much those covers go for because everyone right now has their radar on the modern market. No, you're absolutely right. And even Ben Stein himself, he is known for every week bringing the market the 10 hottest books on the secondary market. But what a lot of people don't realize is he also highlights two more books in the honorable mention section. And each week, one of those books is a golden age book. And I can't tell you how many weeks Stein has covered a Matt Baker record sale for some new cover art that has just hit the open market. So that's something to keep an eye on out for. Matt Baker covers are hot. Yeah, like after seeing his picks, I even went on eBay and looked at last item sold and beautiful covers the people that are aware of them are definitely paying for them so great pick ben i appreciate it so the next person on our hot pick panel is gonna be true first author and speculator resident mass topher what's up everybody this is the mass speculator topher s looking for a hot book this week you could do worse than marvel spotlight 12 the first full Damien Hellstrom as Son of Satan. There's a Hulu show eminent. Sales this week range from 40 to 60 raw and a 9.6 just sold for 700. It's hot, baby. And why not? He's from hell. So there we have it. True first himself, Topher's hot pick. Jack, what did you think about this pick? Well, yes, I love this pick. Hailing from parts unknown, we bring you the mask speculator, Topher S., the man who writes the most controversial column in comics, True First, and he is here with yet another controversial pick. Everyone is paying attention to MCU. Everyone is talking Phase 4, and he hits you with a little bit of a deke and comes with the Hulu pick. Hulu, as recent as yesterday, was just announced to have been taken over completely by Disney, so we are sure to see more Marvel content showing up on the platform. They've already announced two series under the Spirit of Vengeance line with Damien Hellstorm and all-new Ghost Rider, a.k.a. Robbie Reyes as Ghost Rider. Great pick. I think that Hulu market, like you said, everyone right now is specking on the movie aspect of the MCU. There's a lot of hidden spec there in the TV, and we don't know what that Hulu universe is going to hold for us, how those shows are going to carry out, especially with the Hulu, the Disney+. Plus. I think there's a big world there, and I think it's kind of an untapped market. And if you can get it in low, get in now. And that's why we have it on the hot list this week. Coming in next on the hot list this week, we have... Andy's Spotlight writer himself, Andy Tomberlin. Hey, what's up, everyone? Andy with uh, Andy Spotlight Series, CBSI. Uh, what's hot? Dark Horse Comics. Anything Dark Horse related, take your pick. Uh, you never know. Netflix, Dark Horse. That's my hot. So there we have it. Andy's talking Dark Horse books. Anyone with an ear to the ground right now understands why he's talking Dark Horse. They just signed a first look deal with Netflix, correct? Correct. Now, a lot of people are going back buying a bunch of older Dark Horse books, but there's more to the story than that, isn't there, Jack? There really is. A lot of people are mistaking first look from the company being bought outright. So Dark Horse has done a first look deal with Netflix, and what that means is Netflix has the first look at any property put out by Dark Horse. A lot of speculators and people within the speculation community are pointing collectors to a lot of older properties alien um the mignola stuff from hellboy predator etc etc but a lot of these properties are already spoken for earlier we talked about black hammer which is a dark horse release which has already been optioned by legendary pictures so wouldn't be a part of this first look deal same with hellboy and same with alien and predator which are now properties of disney where this deal will really take effect is the upcoming releases from dark horse This will give Netflix the first rate of refusal of any new property that Dark Horse puts out. And with the success of Umbrella Academy and Netflix really looking to shore up their original IP to compete with both the DC app and the Disney Plus app, look for more Dark Horse releases in the future to get quickly optioned by Netflix. Moving on to the hot list this week. Our next pick comes from the usual suspects author on comicbookinvest.com, and that's Peter Reyna. 
What's up, everybody? This is Peter. I write Dollar Bin Digging, Usual Suspects, Wizard Rewind, and pretty much anything else. Ben C. will let me write for CBSI. Uh, my hot pick for this week will be Eternals number 1. Since Richard Madding's casting announcement on Tuesday, there have been about 50 sales. And as this cast is rounding out, I expect more little spikes like this every time a little casting news breaks, with a big jump probably coming when that first trailer finally hits. So that's all I got this week. So there we have fantastic pick from Peter, and he's talking Eternals, right? Absolutely, and Eternals 1 has gotten a lot of attention ever since it was originally brought up by Kevin Feige that the Eternals would most likely be coming to the MCU. But what we've seen in the last several months is several other Eternals first appearances popping off in the market. With three major actors already cast to play in the Eternals movie, we've seen, on top of issue number one, issue number three coming closely in second place with the first appearance of Cersei, presumably played by Angelina Jolie, as well as seeing issues number 5, 7, 9, and 11 in the series, all popping off and hitting record sales numbers. So be on the lookout for these Eternal books in your back issue bins, because they are hot. Right. It's funny how this news comes back around, especially once Kevin Feige mentions it. But if you were on there right when that first Guardians of the Galaxy movie came out, and you kind of put two and two together, you kind of saw them tracking down this road, and then it just added more to it once it came with Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and they started talking more about the Celestials. That's when I was buying heavy on Eternals. <laughs> but that was a good time to jump on the Eternals now. It's hot, and because it's hot, now you're going to be paying the price. But if you would have bought them back when Guardians was out, it would have been a lot cheaper. But great pick and definitely deserves to be on the hot list. And our final pick from the hot list this week comes from Mike Morello, who writes the cover tunes article on comicbookinvest.com. CBSI, what's up? Mike Morello from Cover Tunes, um, giving you what's hot. I am loving the new daredevil right now i have always read daredevil but i am telling you zadarsky is killing it right now you've got Chichetto on interiors tedesco on covers it's unbelievable you should be reading it if you're not already i know other people are endorsing this right now too um if you just want a good solid read with great covers and great art this is the book right now now before we get into mike's pick can I just say, like, how cool he looks in his video? He's just, like, laid back. What's up, guys? This is me. This is my pick. And I want to tell all the viewers, if you go to comicbookinvest.com and you click on the About page and see his contributor picture, if you're a Breakfast Club fan, you'll definitely like that picture. Yes. The book may be hot, but Mike is very cool. Yes. He's <laughs> Joe cool. Too cool for school. But, yeah, great pick. This is... Definitely hits close to home for me because I've been championing Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil run since the beginning. When it comes to the modern Daredevil, I'm talking like post Frank Miller. I think Mark Wades has been one of my favorite, but Chip Zdarsky is definitely writing something I think will win me over over Mark Wade's run. And I definitely agree with Mike's pick. I do think a lot of these are sleeper picks right now. I think eventually people have gotten word of mouth over immortal hulk they got word of mouth of naomi and that added to the spec craze i think daredevil might catch up to that at some point even if it doesn't still a fantastic read and definitely deserves to be on the hot list yes it's very interesting to see cbsi's cover art connoisseur pick a book that has been so entrenched in the reader buzz section of the bolo list chip zadarsky has hit a home run as brian said with this series uh the popularity of the writing really has reminded people and harkened back to that of Mark Wade, that of Kevin Smith, and that of Frank Miller. It's no surprise to see this Daredevil series seeing the type of popularity that those series have seen, and it's only a matter of time before several of these back issues creep above that cover price level, because the fact remains, this series is hot. Also today, a second print for Daredevil just came out, right? You want to talk about that? Absolutely. One book to be on the lookout for. If you know me, you know I love late printing. So also be on the lookout for Daredevil number three, the second printing from Marco Cicchetto featuring the Punisher on the cover. Right. So yeah, I've, I always call it the trifecta because I'm a fan of Marco Cicchetto, but you got Chip Zdarsky writing, you got Marco Cicchetto on interiors, and the regular covers have been done by Tedesco, and I love all three of those. And 
if Chichetto's doing a second print cover art, I'll definitely pick that up as well. And with that, we have our first weekly hot list. How do you feel about it, Jack? I feel really good. we got a good, diverse group of products. We've got some movie spec. We've got some TV spec. We've got some great reads, some great art, a little bit of everything. And that's the point of bringing together this spec super team. When they come together like Voltron, the pieces come together, and you get a piece of every corner of the market. Yeah, they got everything sprinkled in there. I feel like that, uh, that chef guy, the, the little spices. So yeah, that is our first weekly hot list. We are now going to roll into the cold picks. Kicking off our first cold pick is going to be Mel Vaughn from the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel. Cold, you want to know what's cold? DCB variants. Either the retailers got hip to the game and then ordering too many, so people just stop caring about them, or the art is not that good. Some of the art is really good, but it ain't like it was when it was popping. I think that's what's cool right now. So there we have Mel's cold pick. He's talking about the DC cover bees. He's not lying. They're definitely cooled off. And they're definitely cold right now. So it is important to stress that this video is what's hot and what's cold during that week. We're not saying they're going to stay cold forever, right, Jack? But at this time, at this given point, DC cover bees are cold. No, you're right. On a weekly basis, Brian, you and I talk and advocate on the Bolo Live show for DC Cover Bees as a solid long-term speculation play. Having said that, the reality of where the market is today is that they are cold in the market today. Books are coming out and they're not going over cover price. Many of them are staying in retail shops longer than release week. And a lot of this is due to LCS owners, retailers catching up to some of those early trends of DC cover bees hitting that 20 to $25 level. We saw when the, when the original near virgin art debuted from DC comics. So it's just a market correction. As Brian said, it may not be one that continues, but right now DC cover bees, they're pretty cold. And I think another part that adds to that, like you mentioned about the retailers, I think they're also playing catch up where earlier they were hot because they weren't as ordered. Now the retailers are ordering more of the cover B, so now they have more on the shelf. I think that combined with the demand is not as is not there like it used to be. I think there's still a demand, but it's not as high as when they first came out because there's more available. So now the demand kind of washes up for it a little bit. But I still think there's a lot of great art. I love that semi-virgin variant. And if you're a fan of them, like I always say, buy what you like. So if you like those covers, it's cold right now. That's the perfect time to buy. Absolutely. It's, it's Simple Comics Economics 101, Supply and Demand. Yep. So thank you, Mel, for the very first weekly cold pick. Moving on to the second cold pick this week, we have Andy Tomlin again from the Indie Spotlight. Hey, what's up, everyone? Andy back with our Indie Spotlight series, CBSI. What's cold on the comic side? Aftershock 1 in 10s. I hate to say it. They're cold. Um one or two holding their value right now everything else pretty much under or uh right at ratio so be careful can i just say that whenever andy talks i just want to like barbecue and drink beers with the guy <laughs> <laughs> i mean i love andy to death and if i'm ever in south carolina i'm gonna definitely hook up and we're gonna have some barbecue and some beers because fantastic guy and love his article if you're not reading any Spotlight series on comicbookinvest.com, you should definitely give it a read, especially if you're a fan of independent comics. Often duplicated, but never replicated, any Spotlight series on comicbookinvest.com. So what did you think of this cold pick? I really like this pick, and I tell you what, if you want transparency, Andy is bringing it to you. Because Andy has championed Aftershock 1 in 10s prior to release date several times, and he's been right before. If we go back to Dark Red and we think about how that book performed and ended up on the Hot 10, we saw major gains with that. But what we're seeing with these Aftershock 1 and 10s is they're not maintaining in the market. So Andy, being transparent, brings to you some updated info that these books are really kind of cold in the market right now. But again, you got to look at something like a cold list with a grain of salt. It's all about the glass being half full. So while these books are cold, these are still independent properties that could be optioned for future release, whether it's movie or TV, and there are buying opportunities right now. Because remember, guys, when a book is cold, that means it's cheap, and we want to buy low and sell high. 
not the other way around. This is not the FOMO show. <laughs> right. Just make sure you do your due diligence because not everything that's cool is going to go hot again. And as we always say, buy what you like and you'll never go wrong. So moving on into the cold list, we have our next pick. And that is going to come again from our resident reading reviewer, Dan Piercy. And my cold pick would be $10 and $15 spec books. You read a lot about $10 and $15 sales on comic book forums and social media. And anyone with a modicum of experience selling on eBay knows that you're lucky to make about $5 on a $15 sale on eBay after the price of the book, after packaging materials, after shipping, and after eBay fees. So, cold pick, 10 and $15 spec books. See ya. Right, so his cold pick is 10 and $15 flips. So it makes a valid point, don't you think, Jack? Absolutely. See, one thing that you can stand on the outside is do. <clears throat> one thing you can stand on the outside and do is look at a guy like Dan and say, "Well, he's just an old speculator. He doesn't know what he's talking about." But don't let that gray beard fool you. That is from wisdom, not old age, because he has just broken down some pure mathematics and how it pertains to the comics industry. The average book's cover price is four dollars. If you're purchasing that book for four dollars. You're paying upwards of $5 for shipping. You're paying for your materials and your eBay fees, which are now as high as about 13%. Your true profit on a $15 sale is only 3 to $5. You also have to factor in the gas that it took you to go to the store, the time that it took you to go to the store, the time that it took you to list the book and ship the book. And the question becomes, what is your time worth? And when you start looking at that time versus the money you're bringing in, it's not worth it. Therefore, those flips are cold. Now, we all make them when we first enter a speculation game, but the key is to learn how to adapt. You want to have a system set up where you can sell multiples of these $10 and $15 quick flip books at once, allowing yourself to automate your process, or you want to avoid these fly-by-night book of the week $10 to $15 books for flip purposes and instead transition those into long-term holds. The two books that we showed in the image when Dan was speaking in the video, Walking Dead number 191, as well as Major X number one, are two books that are popular with speculators, have great value. We don't have anything bad to say about them, but if you're flipping them for $15, you're really not making the money you deserve with your time. All valid points. The one pro I can say to that is, if you are just starting to sell and you're just started creating an eBay account, you're trying to build that feedback and get that positive feedback. So that's where selling some of those 10 to $15 books. Yeah, you might not be making that large profit, but you're getting that feedback built up. So when people have that confidence to buy from you, that's mainly the one positive I can see from flipping books like that. Definitely, definitely. But that's why I say it's, it's good for a beginner as you move and you develop your game and you start looking at profitability and the profitability of your time. That's a move you want to make is eliminate those 10 to $15 spec plays because they're cold. Right. So, and with the final pick on the cold list this week, we have Peter Reyna once again. It's Peter coming to you again from my son's little geek headquarters. My cold pick this week are new Immortal Hulk books. Where you used to be able to quick flip each new issue, there really hasn't been much opportunity these days as retailers have finally started to adjust their orders and there are plenty of copies out there. So it's still a good read. I'd recommend reading it, but don't buy more than one copy because you're going to be stuck holding a lot of extra copies with all these 1 in 25 second prints and store variants and everything else they're pushing at us these days. So I would just buy the one to read and stick with that. So Peter's pick is Immortal Hulk new releases, right? Right, right. This is definitely a pick I could see being controversial with some who champion Immortal Hulk on a weekly basis. So right, to me, I would say it's it's hot to me personally, just because I love those Alex Ross covers. So I think every regular cover that's an Alex Ross cover of Immortal Hulk is hot to me. But when you look at it from the trend, you see the interest starting to die down a little bit with people chasing after these Immortal Hulk releases. Right. I think the key is that these covers are nice, but hot, I don't know. The market has really spoken in the last couple of releases. I, to harken back to Mel's point about supply and demand, that's what we're seeing with this Immortal Hulk run. When these books were being released and the demand for the issues far exceeded the supply that was hitting LCS shelves, we started to see issues spike to $10 to $15 for regular issues featuring no first appearance. 
just purely off of reader buzz and the popularity of those Alex Ross covers. But now, as we've hit to issues 15, 16, and 17, and retailers have started to catch on to the popularity of Immortal Hulk, as well as every speculator under the sun jumping on board, we have seen an increase in the production of Immortal Hulk to the point that we're even seeing later printings coming with incentive variants, which has caused a ton of controversy in the market and has kind of left a negative taste in a lot of speculators' mouth. And for that reason and the reasons that Peter highlighted, Immortal Hulk later releases are cold. So right, and I think part of that is there's only so long you can ride that money train. I mean, people have been making so much money off Immortal Hulk. You take a great story like that, and then it rises in value, and then speculators get on board, and it rises even more. So now they've been riding that money train selling a lot of these issues, and you're starting to see it slow down a little bit. Right, and I think that is the natural life cycle a lot of times of these series is as soon as Marvel or DC, whoever the publisher is, notices that speculators, investors are doing things like buy multiple copies, selling the books on release day for double and triple what cover price is, they're going to adjust, they're going to market more to retailers, retailers are going to order more, they're going to add more incentives, and naturally the, de- the supplies to outweigh the demand and we see a natural drop in price. But this series is still as good of a quality. These Alex Ross covers aren't dropping in quality at all, and this Al Ewing writing is really top-notch. I still am a big advocate of this Immortal Hulk story. Even from a speculation perspective, these later releases are cold. That brings us to our first full weekly hot and cold list. Bring the list up on the screen right now. So there we have it, Jack. Our hot and our cold list. Want to recap the list real quick? Absolutely. We've got some hot properties. We've got Naomi, The Eternals, Diversity in Comics, Black Hammer, Hulu's Marvel releases, Dark Horse's First Look deal, and Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil run. For cold entries, we've got DC Cover Bees, Aftershock 1 in 10 variants, 10 to $15 release day quick flips, and recent Immortal Hulk releases. So thanks, Jack. That was a great recap of the list, the first weekly hot and cold list. So we are going to distribute this list, correct, Jack? Absolutely, but only after the video premieres. So yes, it's going to be exclusive to Superman's Comics YouTube channel first through this video. After this video premieres, we will then have it on comicbookinvest.com. We'll have it on both of our Instagram accounts, Twitter, Facebook, any of our social media accounts, we will be sharing this list after the video premieres. Also, if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to click that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos like this, also do a bunch of other comic book and pop culture related videos on this channel, make sure you subscribe and click that bell notification because not only Wednesday nights do we have the hot and cold list, but Thursday nights we have the live stream. What's that live stream about, Jack? Well, of course, it is the CBSI Bolo Show live every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. Right, and then that Bolo list, we are covering first appearances that released that week, the reader buzz for comics that have released that week, the variant buzz, as well as Jack's long-term play. And what's the long-term play about, Jack? Well, Brian, like the title says, we're not talking quick flips. We're not talking one of those $10 to $15 spec books. We're talking a long-term play, an investment. We're looking at a book that we see that's going to gain in value over time and is something that you should be looking for more than just a quick turn on New Comic Book Day. Each week, I'll identify one book, one pick that I think over time has a legit chance of gaining some serious value. And the good thing about most of the long-term plays is they have significant low buy-in. So each week, we're gonna post this hot and cold list video to the Simple Man's Comic YouTube channel on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, and I hope you guys will join us. And don't forget, we own Wednesdays.